Hello, colleague. David Violet here with Note Taking for Consecutive Interpreting. We had a question during our practice last weekend, and I thought it was a good opportunity to dig in a little bit behind how the notes, in my view, actually work. The question was how do you di differentiate an adjective from a noun in your notes? And I think this is an interesting question because it reveals something about the way we think about these things. Let me tell you what my view of note-taking is and how and when you write something. In my view, you will listen to something, understand it, and then decide on the basis of what you understood what you will write down to remind you later when you give your interpretation of what was said in terms of the meaning, not the words, because obviously you are not going to use the source language words, you are going to use the target language words. So let's take a look at the sentence in question. It was this, it's about an international organization to which member states make contributions on a voluntary basis. They haven't signed a treaty to make assessed contributions. And the sentence was, making a voluntary contribution was seen as the diplomatic, humanitarian, and civilized thing to do. And the interpreter asking the question wanted to know about these three uh, adjectives, diplomatic, humanitarian, and civilized, how to note them down as adjectives. And my answer was, well, you don't really need to know whether they are adjectives or nouns. And I thought that these would be sufficient notes. Uh, DIP for diplomatic, HUM for humanitarian, and CIV for civilized. Because the idea to me is that you need to understand the root meaning, and then when you go into the target language, you may choose a part of speech that is totally different. It depends on how it fits best in the target language. So even in English, we could say that something is seen as diplomatic, humanitarian, and a civilized thing to do, or could be seen as a sign of diplomacy, humanitarianism, and civilization. And when you're going into another language, uh, you will find words that are independent of the form of the original. You want to find um, language that expresses the best the meaning of what was said. So you may end up actually using uh, uh, adjectives, or you may end up with nouns, or you may end up with even, who knows, in some languages maybe an adverb would sound better and be more accurate. So it, perhaps something like it was seen uh, as behaving more diplomatically, more in line with humanitarianism, and in a civilized manner. Let, that may be what the interpreter ends up saying naturally when going into the target language. And in my view, that is synonymous. So that's to cover the, the question of how the notes work and the fact that we note what we understood so that we can take what we understood and the meaning of the original and deliver it in a way that it's understandable and understood by the target language listeners. Now, it may happen that you do want to note a word more completely. For example, you may want to, if you just write C-O-M, that would be very confusing because it could be community, uh, communication, communism, commission. So you, you would want the end of the word or something to help you distinguish it from other words. And the method recommended, and this is in my uh, course, uh, my online course, is to write the first three letters or the number of letters necessary to distinguish the word from other words, and then add the last letter two or maybe three at the most uh, of the word in superscript. So in the example we have here, uh, diplomacy would look like that. DIP with CY in superscript. And humanitarian would be HUM with IAN in superscript. You could make the argument for putting just N in superscript in this case. 
and civilized would be CIV with D in superscript. You might prefer ED in superscript. So I wanted to cover these two points, the first one being that you actually note the meaning, and then on the basis of your memory of the meaning, you express that meaning in the target language. And secondly, if you actually do need to note the word in order not to have notes that are possible to confuse with another word, with another meaning, you can use this system of adding the very end of the word in superscript. Hello, colleagues. So there you have some of my ideas, but I'd love to hear your ideas. What are your comments? I'd like to know if you have a similar system or you like this system or don't like it, or maybe you disagree with me, please put your comments below. And if you give me a like for this video, that helps. And please subscribe. And I really encourage you to take advantage of the free course I have on symbols for note-taking for consecutive interpreting. If you look in the des description box below, there is a link for that course. So I hope I will see you soon.